Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Oscar, what's going on? Why is the train stopped? Where are we? The springs of the train are unwound again, Kate Walker. As for the question pertaining to our geographical location, I really haven't the slightest idea. Well, we'd better get looking for a winding machine, my dear Oscar. I hope that this place actually has one. The air here is so polluted that I could not possibly risk leaving the locomotive. My joints might corrode irreparably. Right. Let's see. See you soon, Oscar. I shall stay right here, Kate Walker. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. You there!
my god, Oscar. Oscar, talk to me. Are you okay? Why, it is absolutely inadmissible, intolerable, and, and, indescribable. I, I have been attacked. What do you mean you've been attacked? My hands, I no longer have them. They have been stolen. My God, you haven't got your hands. But who did this? What's going on here? We can be sure of one thing, Kate Walker that this heinous crime was committed by a barbarian, a dysfunctional individual whose behavior lacks all finesse. Did you get a look at your attacker? Tell me exactly how it happened. I was standing here polishing up my metalwork. I was just thinking that with all the dust in the air, it would be a good idea to... Oscar. I was very busy, and I suddenly felt two powerful arms grab me from behind and tie me up before I had the chance to defend myself. I wanted to call out, but my attacker gagged me before I could emit the slightest sound. Then he dismantled my hands with a terrifying pair of pliers. It was horrible. I can believe it, my poor Oscar, but did you see him? He was a real barbarian, I tell you. He had bloodshot eyes, steel teeth, and brown scaly skin, and he emitted foul odors. He was a monster, Kate Walker, a real monster, and he had... A weapon? Oscar, please calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Right, Oscar. Let's go find this hand bandit. And this time we're not going to be such a pushover. Kate Walker, please do not think that this problem does not concern me. But if it's all the same to you, I would so much prefer to stay here, just to be on the safe side. An engineer never abandons his train, after all. Yeah, sure. Another good reason not to lend a... I mean, not to help me out. Kate Walker, even an automaton deserves a little compassion. I have just been savagely assaulted. Oh, I can feel one of my spasms coming on. I am on the verge of a clockwork breakdown. And all you do is accuse me of being selfish. Okay, take a rest, Oscar. You're not much use without your hands anyway. Right, I'm done. Take care of yourself, Oscar. Good luck, Kate Walker. And don't forget me. My dear brother, what joy to have news of you after your long silence during the war years. So, you're working for the Russians now. I tell you, we've been hearing some worrying stories about them here. Just your description of that dingy factory makes me cough. But it's so good to hear that your talent is being recognized for its true value, and that your automaton creations are taking the place of workers for all those menial jobs. I'm so proud that Vorlberg automatons are making such a contribution, even if it is small, to the improvement of people's lives. Meanwhile, back in Valadolin, we've been licking our wounds after the war years. Some people have returned, others not. Life is slowly coming back, but it's taking time. All my love, Anna.
door is locked. I've got to find another way around. Hello? Hello? Kate? It's Dan. Can you hear me? Da Dan, is that you? I can't hear you so good. Dan? Hey, can you talk? It's about your last conversation. I are you still mad at me? Come on, this is, it's important. Dan, you're breaking up. I'll try and call you when I get out of this mine. You're fine? Kate! Come on, what's happening? Listen, we've got to talk. Look, the line's just getting worse and worse. I'm hanging up. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Go that way.
Yes? Kate, can you hear me this time? Yes, I can hear you just perfectly, Dan, but I can't talk to you now. I'm in a real hurry. I wanted to say sorry. I know I wasn't very understanding last night. I'm feeling a bit bad about it. Okay, you're a real sweetheart, but I've got to leave you now. I'm not angry with you, so don't worry. I've just got to catch up to someone, and quick. But Kate, Kate, this is really important. I'll call you back then. I'm sorry. I don't need to do that.
Hey, you. Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? What do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back, now. Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him, and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not joking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary. Real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never. Such workmanship. Such precision crafting. It is... It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy. Temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. You can... Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and fulfill my dreams. Everything is now in place. You see, I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, chimney stacks, they've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now all I need is her... <gasps> I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory. But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. The one and only Helena Romansky. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoltzgrad. She sang here, you know, when our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then. Later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age, that is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romansky back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me, and me alone. And is she okay about this? Sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her, when she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made. Then, you know, this was no small achievement, miss. Once molten iron flowed through here, now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. But then you arrived. 
So lucky, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. So, when will this Madame Romansky come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her, tell her. Hey, why don't you go? The quicker you bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? And you promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romansky was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. A shrine to her glory. It's like her own personal museum in a way. You should take a look. This whole story is completely nuts. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, I just really can't wait till tomorrow morning. Tell your mommy what's up. Uh, there's no way I'm calling you after you. That's what you Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a um, Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. 
Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with a Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arrowbad, but it was 15 years ago, and he's not sure. And, well, honey, when Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks, a bundle, Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. Thanks again. Catch you later. Hello? Did I wake you up? I can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. Oh, you know, I, I guess we were both a little high-strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah, I left the door to my office open, and I was convinced everybody around heard me. Oh. I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. Promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true. I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And I still know Hans Wahlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Director? Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Director? I think I know where Helena Romansky is. My god. You have found Helena? That is fantastic. From my research, Helena Romansky is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romansky is in Arlbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romansky would be happier here. I think... She'll prefer the peace and quiet here. The perfect tranquility of our little town. You know, I could get there ten times quicker if you gave me my automaton's hands back. Then I could use my train. Out of the question that I tamper with my pianist now. Please understand. There are still one or two finer adjustments that I must make before Helena arrives. How can I get to Arlbad? There is one way that you can. 
Here, in the city, there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, he'll have something. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Okay, I'm going. Wish me luck. I am counting on you, Miss Walker. Hello? Kate! Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia! Great, just the right person. Look, have you heard of Helena Romansky? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. Well, what relations this singer got with the toy cocaine? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that... I had a drink or two with Dan, because he wants to talk. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other day, and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? No! No, not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on him for you at the same time. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that he'll be pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no, no worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. Doesn't look like that works.
Excuse me. Sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, but you hoo Can you hear me? Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff. Oh, holy mother. A dame. A pretty dame on the launch pad. Uh, please, no need to worry, sir. Just do stay calm. I just want some information. Watch what you're doing, sweetheart. We ain't got no information, no strategies, no plans to tell anyone anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Military regulations, you dig it, man? <laughs> uh, please, can you try and get a grip? I must absolutely find a way out of this industrial complex. Jeez, me too. I've really got to get out of this dump, but not before I've had a little drink. Here. Yeah. Get your pretty little lips around this. Vodka! Tell me what you think. Do you have a vehicle to lend me? I think I'd even test one of your rockets right now if I had to. Toast my rockets? Hey, pretty dame, I'll drink to that. Now, just a minute, we gotta need a special bottle for this special occasion. Something to blow you away. Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff! Okay, that's enough. What was that? Uh, did you say something? Are our female comrades revolting or what? <laughs> uh oh, trouble on its way. <laughs> Bottoms up. Power to the babushkas. I was going to... Oh, forget it, it doesn't matter. He's too drunk to help anyone anyway. I am not drunk. I have drunk. A little. <laughs> I left a bottle or two around here. I gotta get some air. Wall's getting pretty tight. We'll figure out that blast off later. Are you okay, Colonel? Are you sure you're all right? Too far, you'll. Ah. I need a key.
Hey, what's happening? Let's water you got there. Stop it! Now! You want me to drown? Calm down, it's all right. Just a little wake-up call, that's all. You must have had quite a bit to drink. Gee, you right there. Not the first time, either. Probably won't be the last man in my head. Please, could you whisper? Please, do excuse me. I thought it was the only way I could think of to bring you back to your senses. A little extreme, maybe. I get the impression you're a lady who likes to see results. I'm looking for someone. Hans Varlberg. And I think he came by here about 20 years ago. Hans? You want to know if I know Hans? But of course. He invented one of the most incredible flying machines of the Cosmodrome. Christmas, good old Hans. Even after that dumb and dirty trick he played on me. But I wouldn't give to see him again. What do you mean? What did he do to you? <sighs> Hans Varlberg and his famous flying wing. See? He invented this kind of spring-loaded launcher. Capable of projecting a weird rocket into the stratosphere. It was red revolutionary hot. And I was going to be its first test pilot. Oh God, what a joke. And then several days before the launch, Hans disappears into thin air. Yeah, poof. The test program? Well, it's fine. Just disappeared like that? Without saying where he was going? You see, he wanted to hit the stars, but not bombs, if you get my drift. And one day, Hans finally worked out what his launcher was really for. As the generals have always called the shots here, you realize, and... And when they asked Hans to screw a nuclear warhead onto his flying wing, well, he wasn't a happy man. So he left. Just like that. If everything was ready, why didn't you just wind the thing up and go flying after all? Nobody understood machines here like Hans, especially not his own utopian inventions. You see, such inventions only live and breathe with their creator in the saddle. Without him, Space travel became damn near impossible. Since then, well, I still like to travel, but in my own little way. I'm beginning to understand a bit about how Hans Vorlberg's inventions work. What is this one like? I don't really know. As you can see, I'm a soldier, ma'am. Nothing more, nothing less. And not a goddamn aerospace engineer. Does Arrowbad mean anything to you? Arrowbad. It's been a long time since I heard that name. It's a spa resort, man. Top brass of the regime would go there. As well as convalescing soldiers, tired politicians, profiteers and racketers, the whole caboodle. They'd go live it up, all expenses paid. One privilege I never got. Just two steps away from becoming the nation's hero and no free holiday for me. And where exactly is this place? Further east. We never had to know where exactly. The airship was programmed to take vacationers there. From here. Don't you find it strange to see so many birds in the Cosmodrome? It's the Iron Rafters. I love them. But nowadays, they can enjoy a bit of good old peace and quiet here. So, of course, they turn up in flock loads. Sometimes I said Soyuz onto them. Just like the good old days. Soyuz? Soyuz is the last Golden Eagle left in active service. We had to get the dumb canaries out of the way before takeoff, so what did we do? Set the eagle on them. And you should see them fly. Soyuz? He's like a cat among the pigeons. Magnificent. Thank you so much for helping me. I'm sorry to have woken you up like that. It's been great talking to you, ma'am. I think I'll take 40 winks right now.
If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. I need a key. Sir? My head. Oh, my poor head. I need some quiet. Please, can I have some quiet? Do you think the airship still works? No idea. It's been so long since it was used. And then I've got to learn how to use it, too. You won't have any worries there. It has an automatic pilot. Go visit if you want. Here's the key. Thanks. Right. Don't you? Doesn't look like that works. There you are. I was looking for you. I've managed to trigger the autopilot mechanism, but the airship still won't take off. Do you know why? Let me... I've got... some idea. But you look like you're a pretty good mechanic. Let's just say that since the start of the journey, I've managed to get by and get to know Hans Varlberg's strange contraptions. Okay. I have a deal to make with you. I've been living in this dumb launcher site for years. And I've always said that one of these days I'm going to the stars on that flying wing. And I'd better make that trip before vodka stews my brain. But I gotta know how it works. And you look like you might have some clue at least. If you could help me get to the stars, I'll tell you how the airship works. What do you say? We got a deal? Why not? I'll see what I can do for you. Comrade Boris, I need a few drops of your blood. Excuse me? To get the centrifuge going, 
We'll need to analyze the pilot's blood. If you're going to the stars, you've got to be in good health, you see? That's why I need a blood sample. It won't hurt. There's two things a good soldier is always ready to do. Drop his pants and spill his blood. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll only be needing your blood. My pleasure, ma'am. Okay, I think I've figured out how it works. Get settled in and let's go. <laughs> Colonel, are you all right? Never been better. Head's spinning a bit, but I am used to that. I'm a professional pilot. Clear as smog. Can you speak up? I'm ready. Press the launch button. Takeoff procedure engaged. Countdown commencing. Colonel, you've forgotten to tell me the secret of the airship. What do I have to do? Liftoff. 